and the, the the end of the nose should be angled so that you can see the nostrils when you tip the baby upwards but when you're looking at it head on you can't really see the holy bits generally some you can <laughs> again there's no there's no right and wrong way really but um as a rule of thumb, I like to do them like that, where Mm, something not quite right with this. It's not quite. It's not quite symmetrical. It's better. Need a bit more on the other side, I think. Go on like this for hours. Probably end up with the nose as wide as the face by the time I've finished. I'll have to start taking them back again. Excuse me. I'll get this right in a minute. All right, I'm going to have to look at that text. I like that better. I see it just fractional tiny tiny differences make a huge difference on the look of the baby so if it doesn't quite look right just keep going and then just don't make big changes just make tiny tiny changes and you'll suddenly look at it and think yeah I've got it now and then you move on to the next bit and then you put your thumb on it and spoil it all and have to start again. Still so not quite right. I think the centre's not quite centre. I think that's what it is. Because you have to watch with the nose because um, that's the bit that will set the eyes out. So many times you see a lovely sculpt and the there's one eye further out than the other. 
and um, it's not a case of moving the eyes it's a case of making sure that the nose is central and then the lips because it's if you do it like me and work downwards from the eyes it's so easy to change and uh, to move the nose and the, and the and the mouth not so easy to, to move the eyes once they're in and once you've done the the work so you do see beautiful sculpts and the eyes drifting away I've done it myself so many times <clears throat> and you do see it on other people's sculpts but they don't see it themselves um, you might say oh you know the eyes maybe look teeny bit and they can't see it because they've sculpted it that way you can't see your own you can't always see your own mistakes you have to good way of doing it is to hold the sculpt upside down you can see it because if you if you think it's okay for one eye to be that way when you hold it upside down you'll see it the other way um, and you'll see the difference or the other way of doing it. the other thing you, do, you can do is um, hold it up in the mirror again you see it opposite to how it is so your eyes don't trick you the same as when you're just looking at your own your own work because you do you see your own work as fine sometimes you'll you'll put it down you'll come back to it a day later like I did with this one and you think oh no 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 absolutely not so it is good to take your time must be so boring to watch I'll say I'm hardly hardly touching the clay really with the tool at this at this stage. Hardly touching it. Just no, I'm not happy with that.
Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm there with that one, with that, with the nose. So I'm just going to work on the upper lips. Right. So the mouth, as we said before, is about the same width as the um, nose in a relaxed baby and this one's going to be just relaxed he's just going to be sitting there looking at you a little bit worried a little bit worried aren't you Baba? so just a bit beyond the lips the mouth still has that sort of dimple that, that little groove where the cheek comes round just a bit beyond the edge of the mouth and they have this little sucky lip part here which is like a little sticky down bit but that this hardly shows really on a closed mouth I like to just represent it. So a lot of babies, their mouth, their lips kind of disappear, sort of like so that the 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 lip is sort of like that, and the 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 upper lip is like that, and the lips just disappear backwards. So you, I'm going to do this one like a little bit like that, I think. They don't necessarily come round to the top a lot. Anyway, that'll, that's how I want to do it really. Right, the bottom lip, you get this bit underneath here that, that goes in. It can be quite dramatic, that bit. So, it, that's the profile. I'm going to just build out this bottom lip a teeny bit more. But the bottom lip definitely sits behind the top lip to a degree. Doesn't the top lip sort of comes out, juts out, and the bottom lip sort of goes back in? So the bottom lip, it's it's a bit more rounded than the top bit, the top lip usually. So we have this sort of roundy bit, like a, and it ends there really, and goes back into the other lip. So it, it's usually certainly no longer than the top lip. There we are. And then we often get sort of the lip going down, not as a lip, but as a kind of ridge around the little chin. So the chin is tiny and it just sits there, pouty.
sometimes the cheek, cheek goes into the chin and sometimes the cheek you get this sort of jowly thing going on depends on the shape of the face but I, I quite like that shape I'm quite happy with that like him actually No, I always, always, always end up with the uh, the neck too far forward, so I need to be careful that that doesn't come forward. But it goes down into skin anyway. Now, I've got far too much clay at the back of the head here. So I'm just going to trim that off a little bit. Now, I reckon for a, a baby of 12 inches, I probably need a head circumference of about 8 inches, just over. So I can check that afterwards. All, all babies are different and they do differ. Even newborn head circumference baby, they differ. But as a rule of thumb, um, a newborn baby on a normal 20 inch baby is about 13 and a half inches, the so head circumference. So I'm going to just check that. I'm just going to put this down, go and get, whoops, and dump the nail into him. I'm going to go and get a, a tape measure. So you measure the head circumference around the forehead and around the back of the head. Give you an idea how, how much, oops, don't have a glob of clay on the back of the head though. Gives you an idea how, how big to do the skull. It's about nine inches, <clears throat> so it's uh, it's a bit too big. <clears throat> so I need to take quite a bit of clay off, off here, which I kind of knew. Actually, I need to check he's still three inches high. The head may have gone smaller or bigger. on. So we know that the head size is right. We just need to get the um, get some clay off from the back of the skull now.
This is where my um, smoother comes in handy. My kick smoother. Try not to uh, squish what you've just done on the face. He look he looks a little odd until you get the ears on, but I'm I'm kind of kinda of happy with him now. Kinda of happy. Are you kinda of happy, William? I think he's kinda of happy too. So what I do now, what I'm going to do is because I'm kinda of happy with him, I'm going to I'm going to give him a teeny bit of a forehead, a, um, a brow there. I don't want to do, I don't want to squish his face. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, bake him before I do the ears. But it's not that easy applying ears to baked head because they don't stick and you don't you 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 want a hole you know you want you want a hollow in the in the to, to to play with and that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to dig out an area of clay at the side of the head where the ears are going to go so that when i've baked him and I come to do the ears, I have some area to play with. Um, yeah, I think he's quite cute. I think he's all right. Just comes together sometimes. Oh, oh. At one time so I'm going to spend a bit of time just smoothing the head out and then I'll come back on camera and show you how I'm going to dig out the ears okay okay um, now he's kind of getting ready to bake because I don't like I'm worried about squishing him when I do the ears or squishing the ears when I bake him so I'm going to um, I'm going to do bake him before I do the ears, but what I'm going to do, because it's actually not that easy to do an ear on top of a baked plane because the ear goes into the head, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out an area on each side of the head right down to the to deep so that when he comes out of the oven and he's baked and he's hard, I can put fresh clay in and rework this area. And the same on the other side so trying not to um, hurt him the ear goes from the eye line to the mouth line approximately and the it's approximately sort of halfway back on the head the actual whole bit so the bit where there's a little little triangle bit in front of it and then there's the hole and then the ear goes around it is about there. So what I'm going to do is dig out some clay here. Doesn't have to be a smooth hole as long as I've got something I can grab hold of and it's not protruding so that I don't have to chip any away when, when it comes out the oven. So everything's fine to there and then the ear goes on. So I'm just going to cut out a clump of clay. That'll do. So when, I come, when it comes out the oven, I can add fresh clay into that area and make the ear. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So again, the ear will go from there to there. It's the, 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 the holy bits about there. So I'm just going to cut out...
Oh, here we are. That'll do. So that'll get that'll give me a, a good area to work with because I can I can add new clay to that when it's cooked, and um, it'll stick better. Okay. Make sure I've not damaged his little face. He's rather cute, and he has that worried look, which I do like. That sort of, oh, what's my mama? What's my mama? Okay, I'm going to bake him now. Okay, so little William is baked, his head anyway. Um, so I'm going to do his ears, and uh, then his head's more or less finished, ready for the body. So we're going to do his ears now. This is uh, another little chappy that I'm doing at the same time. I think that's going to be a little girl, but this is a much smaller one. Um, she's going to be about eight inches. So I'm going to start off by filling these holes with fresh clay and that can be the base for me to make the ear on. Um, I like to bake the face before I do the ears um, so I don't mess the face up when I'm doing the ears but it's not that easy to put fresh clay onto just a flat surface like that. So if I was doing the ear onto a baked clay it's it's not that easy to, to blend it. Whereas if I do this, basically put some fresh clay in the, uh, the socket that I left, then I've got a good base to stick my ears to. I'll do the same the other side. I don't know if anybody else does it like this, this is just the way I do it. <clears throat> I think probably most people do the ears while the head's still <coughs> unbaked, but anyway. Okay, the, the, the positioning of the ears, it's um, generally, if you look at the face head on, if I can find a picture of the baby front end. Hmm. Oh, here we are. Hmm. My sweet niece. Usually, the ears are somewhere between the eyes and the mouth. That's if the, the head's looking straight at you. Obviously, if the head's looking upwards, um, it'll look like they're lower and so on. But um, generally, that's where they are. Um, if you look at the side of the head, if the if you've actually finished sculpting the whole width of the head, the ear, if you make a point half, sort of around, just lower than the ears, around about the uh, nose and about halfway from front to back on the jawline and that is approximately where the whole of the ear will start again where the nose is and about halfway front to back. Okay. And the ear slightly tips backwards uh, at the top, slightly tilts. Okay, um, ears. I'm making a a circle and cutting it into two wedges and this will form the the base for the ear at each side so I'm going to pop it on that side well I'm 
that's where the centre line is. So I'm going to pop it behind there. And tilt it slightly backwards. And saying, well, I'll leave the other one off for, for the minute. So, squish down at the front, so it's a kind of wedge, like a, an orange slice. Make sure it's well, well stuck down. And then the same at the other side. Make sure they're even. So look at it from the front, from the top. Make sure they're the same distance from the front to back, from the back. So the front part is going to be the little lobe and then it goes up into the curly whirly bit which then goes down to the actual ear bit. So that's kind of the shape of it. That goes down into the deeper into the ear. So it sort of goes out out of the hole, up and round. Sometimes this middle bit actually protrudes further out than the, the very edge bit, strangely. 
And I quite like it when it's like that, to be honest. Because it makes them look prominent, but not sort of Dumbo ears type prominent. So that's kind of it, really. You don't have to be... Certainly on a baby this size, you don't have to be too much, have too much detail. It's just a suggestion of of how it goes, really. There's usually a bit of a kind of weird dent thing here. Don't know why. Everybody's different. So that's kind of it, really. Right, I'll just do the other side. Um, sometimes the difficult part is getting them both the same size and shape and everything. That's about all I'm going to do on that one. Okay, I'll do the other one. Now. Right, <coughs> the other ear I'm going to do, but I'm going to do it off camera because the, the it's the same the same thing as this ear. Um, just again really um, it must be very very boring to watch so um, I'm just going to do this off camera and come back